Are aliens leaving the realm of the kooky conspiracy theorists and becoming part of accepted reality? How do seemingly credible reports of extraterrestrials fit within the Christian worldview? And if you're not a Christian or religiously affiliated, please stick around because the information that you'll hear affects everyone. Perhaps this is the first you're hearing about this, but conversations about aliens and UFOs, or more recently, unidentified aerial phenomenon, aka UAPs, are entering the public conversation on a more credible basis. Recently, the Navy confirmed that some footage of a mysterious tic-tac-shaped object caught on film back in 2004 is legit. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. That is our LNS, dude. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. In August of 2020, the Navy even created a commission to review incidents involving UAPs. Talking heads in the media are discussing how we should handle this information and what to think about it. You know, the video in and of itself is, is limiting what it can tell us, but I think it speaks to, uh, as the Pentagon itself has admitted, uh, this continuing uh, trend of, of truly unexplained things um, coming into the public consciousness more than they have before. So if we're no longer seeing just footage of weather balloons or blurs on the screen that we can brush off as really nothing, but instead maybe a craft capable of things impossible for us and our current understanding of physics, how do we process that? So far there hasn't been anything threatening about these incidents, but having a potential rival nation or even civilization with such a technological mismatch is an unsettling possibility for most. There is a growing clamor for more information and more disclosures from the government. And recent legislation is demanding more declassified information from the Pentagon. So we must ask again if we can wrap our brains around the idea that these apparent incidents are genuine, what would a world changing event like that mean for the world and how should a Christian respond? Conservative commentator Andrew Clavin claims that there is no conflict with his Christian worldview if extraterrestrials existed. We have revelation of God through Jesus Christ. They may have their own revelation in some other manner, but it doesn't disqualify our revelation. Christians who believe in theistic evolution would probably be more open to the idea of other intelligent life in the universe. Also, there are already some History Channel types who believe that the Bible writers were speaking of alien encounters or technology without knowing it. But here's the thing, it's one thing to have an opinion about whether or not aliens could exist and maybe not process or fully realize all the theological and philosophical baggage that comes along with that position, but it's another thing to put that opinion to the test when they metaphorically come knocking at your door in a more blatant and obvious way. You see, then we're no longer free to put off the question. You can't just laugh off grainy footage as nothing of significance or personal anecdotes as hearsay. You'll actually have to make up your mind about what you're seeing and what you're hearing. Predictably, the default reaction for many Christians might be to view anything so jarringly unfamiliar or unknown at some, as uh, some kind of craft popping into and out of the sky as demonic activity. When you mention something confl UFOs conflicting with uh, those with some within the Pentagon philosophically or religiously, um, were they because of that? Uh, did you was there any proactive suppressing or limiting of how much you could do because of that? I remember the conversation very well. Um, this is a person I respected tremendously, very, very senior person. He told me, he said, Lou, I want you to stop, stop doing this. I said, okay, sir, I, I certainly can, but may ask why? And he says, well, we already know what it is. Now, at that moment, I, I honestly thought maybe it was our own technology. I was running up against some super uber secret sap, and uh, you know, they were telling me to stop. And I said, okay, sir, so, so it's ours? And he said, no, that's not what I'm saying. And he said, uh, he asked me point blank, have you read your Bible lately? And I wasn't quite sure where he was going with that. And I said, well, sir, I, I, I 
I think I know what it says. What, where are you going with this? And he said, well, then you would know that these things are, are demonic and we should not be pursuing them. Yeah. And uh, I, I, he, was, he wasn't kidding. He was, that's exactly how, how he felt. So this is a Pentagon. And, this is a DO, Department of Defense official uh, saying, stop looking at UFOs because they're demonic. Correct. Obviously, as Christians, we don't want to be reactive and closed minded, but we also would be in trouble if we abandoned every position simply when it is subject to ridicule. Besides, we're seriously discussing ET in the news now. Do we really want to start ridiculing any explanations at this point? I know some Christians who don't believe in the possibility of any intelligent life outside of our planet, other than the demonic realm. And so they've already made up their minds. And I personally don't believe that the Bible teaches that. But here's the thing. I do believe that they're still right, even if it's for the wrong reasons. At any rate, for the many who don't hold to that uh, limited view, uh, are they struggling to make sense of what they're witnessing? And if the evidence were strong enough that we're looking at genuine flying objects with physics-defying abilities, with the possibility of beings from other worlds somehow controlling them, then I think it would be natural to develop some curiosity about that, to want to know more about them and to understand who they are and where they're from and what they believe and how that affects our understanding of our place in the universe. I'm concerned that that may be the attitude of some believers and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video. Because while we should not be reactionary, I do believe we should view this kind of phenomenon as demonic. That's why my face is in the video thumbnail, if you didn't notice. Um, I believe I'm more credible than the uh, ancient aliens guy. I believe that these manifestations are part of an intentional and long-term campaign to deceive humanity. The Bible says that in the last days that humanity will face major deception. Jesus warned his followers against false teachers and false prophets, but also lying wonders and signs. We're also told in Revelation 16, 13, and 14 that demon spirits would perform signs to coalesce earthly leaders under the banner of Satan and would usher in the final spiritual battle between good and evil. In terms of power to manifest signs, Satan has them. That doesn't mean I understand the power to make objects appear and disappear, but if you're willing to believe that beings from other planets have crafts with characteristics that can defy physics as we know it, it isn't a far stretch to believe that more advanced beings don't necessarily need a workshop with sheet metal and screwdrivers to manifest physical objects. The Bible also calls Satan the god of this world, lowercase g. Paul, in a letter to the Ephesians, calls him the prince of the power of the air, which is a very interesting name considering the nature of these signs. This is not an exhaustive study on the subject, but let's just say that the kinds of things that we're seeing and hearing line up with, the, with Scripture's description of who would be behind false signs and wonders in the sky. But you may wonder, why would I try to attribute this kind of seemingly high-tech, elusive, and non-confrontational, speedy, tic-tac thing to demons? Aren't I just trying to awkwardly fit this unidentified phenomenon into my existing religious paradigm? You might think so, but no. And that's because fundamentally this kind of UAP is not reserved for the domain of sci-fi. There is a clear occultish connection here to this concept of visitors from other worlds. One way you see this is that messages from supposed aliens are already being delivered through channeling. Channeling, yes. Google channeling and aliens, if you don't believe me. This practice normally thought of channeling spirits of the dead is being used to supposedly communicate with intelligences from other galaxies. If you pay attention to many of the people who claim to have witnessed aliens or their crafts or be abducted, they often 
have some tie to mysticism, spiritism, occultish connections, or at the very least a belief in the immortality of the soul. These are the beliefs and practices that open one up to greater deception. For instance, in a Vice article from a few years ago, Yafet Koto, the black actor who appeared in the movie Alien, spoke frankly about his interactions with these supposed aliens. He said he had experience with them for 50 plus years, and even during filming he would be followed by visible crafts, and other witnesses around him would see them too. Part of his attempt to deal with this activity was to visit a faith healer and a spirit healer, which is an obvious giveaway about the nature of why he was dealing with this in the first place. Faith and spirit healing indicate a new agey kind of belief system at play. The New Age movement is very connected to notions of life on other planets as well as angel worship and belief in reincarnation. They're all tied together. Some New Agers are already claiming to practice astral projection in order to visit other planets and come back with messages. I really don't want to go all the way down that rabbit hole, but they claim they have visited different galaxies, that there are different kinds of beings. They even speak about one type of beings called Nordics, because they're tall, blonde, beautiful beings, which, hello, sound like angels. The messages provided during these channeling sessions or astral projection encounters are remarkably consistent, albeit perhaps a little vague and light on details. Essentially the message is that humans are putting Earth in jeopardy. Reality and death are just somehow illusions that humanity can overcome and that they can guide us. In an article published on the New Age site CollectiveEvolution.com, supposedly written by a human medium who is capable of astral projection, the alien beings claimed in their channeled message that they are consciousnesses just like we are. They're saddened by human suffering. They're interested in helping humanity and that they wish to help us in our next stage of human evolution but require human agreement first. And lastly, a direct quote from the article. Our relationship could develop in stages. Several stages of several years or decades would occur. Demonstrative appearance of our ships. Physical appearance beside human beings. Collaboration in your technical and spiritual evolution. Discovery of parts of the galaxy. You can dismiss this as not credible based on the alternative nature of the news source, but their article was written in 2017. If I was talking to you about this in 2017, you might say, what demonstrative appearance of our ships? But, well, we're past that. I don't even recommend reading the rest of the channeled message because I don't think we should really open ourselves up to hearing them out and become overly fascinated with their lies. But I will include the link so that you can at least confirm that I'm not making this up. Up until now, I've explained the apparent New Age connection for the unidentified aerial phenomenon, which should be sending up warning flags to any Christian paying attention. But how do we know that this kind of New Age explanation of UAP actually has anything to do with reality? Aren't the New Agers just reaching into their grab bag of kooky ideas that may or may not be real phenomena and slapping their New Age messaging onto it? Where's the smoking gun that connects the supposed channelers and the astral projectors and the mysterious tic tacs in the sky with Satan himself? Ah, good question. For that, you must become familiar with a man named Roger Morneau. If you're not already, uh, immediately following the service in World War II, Roger was introduced uh, by a sailor buddy into a secretive high-level satanic society. High-level is a very important modifier. These weren't your average clueless bargain basement Satanists. These were powerful individuals, successful, who had actual contact with 
demonic spirits who had privileged access to some of the supernatural power that they had. The short version of the story is that Roger was one of the very few people to have ever escaped a group like this and lived to tell about it. The satanic priests of this secret society were privy to a great deal of esoteric knowledge and they shared it freely with Roger believing that any of the initiates who were pre-selected by the evil angels would never be able to go on to secretly betray their organization. A few others who had previously attempted to leave were all subject to mysterious or accidental deaths. As you'll be able to tell from the hairstyles, the footage of the interview was recorded in the 1980s. But the plans of Satan and his angels were discussed and shared with Roger in approximately 1946. Have a look. Roger, when I was a teenager back in the 1970s, I remember a song that came out talking about the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've seen the development of the New Age. And I wondered if back when you were involved in spirit worship, if they talked about New Age at all. Oh, yes. It was a big thing that uh, was coming up. One of the... Uh, major deceptions of the last days. Mm. And the priest uh, told us, uh, he had, we talked to him quite a while, and uh, then he said, uh, could I have a little bit more of your time? I want to do something very fascinating. He says, the grain plain, the master's grain plain, for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause, just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So he continued, you know, after we, uh, express ourselves that we're deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said, it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan says is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff. Because he says, spirits, demon spirits, will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. Mm. And he went on say, so saying that uh, uh, they will claim uh, to have out-of-body experiences. Are you familiar with out-of-body experiences? Mm -hmm. I've read about In them. other words, so a person's, uh, there's some persons are supposed to be able to, you know, uh, they believe in their immortal soul. Astral soul projection. Pro yes, right. Goes in two different parts of the world and sees things and come back and then they write all about it. You know. I have heard of that. So, <clears throat> due to the fact that the millions of the earth people believe in having people having an immortal soul, it has to be readily, readily accepted when the spirits will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people of the land, you see. Now, what is a trans medium? It's a channeler today. What, what is known today as a channeler? Channeler, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shirley MacLaine's experience of getting involved with spiritism and with the uh, inhabitants, of was inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies. I taped the whole thing three hours. And you were hearing the fulfillment of exactly. what this high priest had said yeah. 45 years ago. Yeah, exactly. There's the smoking gun. When the world talks about UAP and says that there's no explanation, they're mistaken. Describing this phenomenon as demonic is by no means a reach or an attempt to slap a biblical term on something we don't yet understand. There is no question as to what is happening. We are merely at the relatively early stages of the process of acclimating the modern human mind to the presence of superhuman beings outside of our control. Well, early in the harvesting process, that is. The seeds were planted long ago. I want you to consider something very profoundly stated by a Daily Wire producer and panelist, Jeremy Boring, about why we even perceive these phenom phenomena as potentially alien. The idea of aliens is a novel concept rooted in fiction. The fact that this is even in our minds is a possibility. When we see something moving across that screen, the only reason we even ask ourselves, is that extraterrestrial life? 200 years ago, that would, no one would have, you could have seen it in the sky and your thought wouldn't have been, is that extraterrestrial life? Because that idea had not been broadly introduced oh, into the American psyche. We have a frame of reference now, largely programmed in us by fiction, yep. 
that causes us to see certain things and judge them according to that frame of reference. He is very correct, but he does not see that this is actually part of the long con. If you don't believe in good and evil angels operating in the unseen realm dimension, then perhaps I lost you a while ago. But spiritual warfare is real. The evil angels are able to plan and strategize far beyond our limited field of view and use human storytelling and fiction as tools to shape perception. If you want evidence of that, see any of Scott Ritzma's um, many documentaries on spiritualism in Hollywood. At any rate, the ideas are in the public consciousness. If people were to experience these kinds of unexplainable phenomena 200 years ago, they would most likely attribute them to divine signs or demonic or angelic activity, and any messages from these beings would be more widely scrutinized in light of scripture. Now, however, because we trust in the Bible much less, and it's, the trust has been eroded, and fiction has been able to create a non-spiritual category for this kind of experience or revelation, people are being conditioned to accept the messages without the same spiritual antibody resistance. Now, I want you to simply hold the possibility of deception in your mind while considering the nature of the phenomena. They appear as some kind of generic, benign craft of simple geometric shapes rather than insectoid and scary or, or being ominously large. The ships do amazing things we normally consider impossible, like instantaneous acceleration, vanishing from sight, traveling at thousands of miles per hour with no visible propulsion or even a disturbance in the air or water. They appear to be able to be aware of human plans, such as flight paths, even speeding ahead to where the fighter jets are heading. They seem to appear intentionally to draw military attention by appearing in restricted fly zones, only to then flit and dance around the capabilities of the world's greatest military, but also never aggressively. There have been no descriptions of these craft in any way acting with hostility even when they've been targeted or locked onto by sighting systems or other scanning uh, equipment. These kind of activities are not random or coincidence. This is all intentional to reveal to humanity that there are super intelligent interdimensional beings already living on our planet without humanity freaking out and fleeing to the God of heaven for protection. In psychology, this process is known as habituation. Expose someone to something for long enough, and it will become normal. Once humanity is habituated, we will desire the help of these beings. Why wouldn't we? They've shown that they pose no threat. They have wonderful technology and will be able to help us and uh, guide us to our next step of human evolution. If this really is strange to you, I get it. I didn't see the alien thing coming either, but... I believe this is how spiritualism is going to manifest itself in the last days. This whole concept of aliens and astral projection and all that requires a belief in the immortality of the soul. It will also require acceptance of evolutionary origins and future and many other subtle distortions of the truth. The concepts that are tied to these manifestations are targeted attacks against the truth of the gospel and God's end time messages. God's word and the three angels message are absolutely vital to know and share in this time. If you're ignorant about these truths, you are likely to be swept away in the deception. Remember what Roger Morneau said, this is Satan's grand plan for harvesting the nations. Revelation 16, 14 says, For they are the spirits of demons, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and over the whole world, to gather them for the battle of the great day of God Almighty. We are in the beginning phase of this final act of gathering and harvesting. As the evil angels themselves have stated, this can occur in stages, over years or possibly even decades. 
things may quiet down for a bit while the information slowly suffuses through the public consciousness. No matter the case, it's officially started. And we need to really grasp the reality that we don't have long left. I really want everyone watching this to hear this stated explicitly and clearly. Believing that God and Satan actually exist won't save you. Knowing that demons are the ones making these phenomena appear will not save you. Beyond a basic sense of urgency and awareness, there is no extra saving virtue in becoming an expert in demonic deception in the last days. Remember that the mark of the beast will be given with a mark either on the head, belief, or on the hand, your actions or your compliance. The pressure will be so great that only a mind fully surrendered and under the control of the Spirit of God will be able to resist. God's Word says that if you do not have the Spirit of Christ, then you do not belong to Him. Romans 8, 9. Whoever has the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. 1 John 5, 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3.3 3. Some of you listening may not have that assurance of salvation. You may have been curious to know more about aliens, and maybe you were even hoping that perhaps they could provide some answers or possibly share some technology or help us in some way. But now you're confronted with the reality that there is no special third option. There are no benevolent beings coming to painlessly guide humanity to a higher plane of existence. There remains simply the standard choice between two possible masters. Satan, who promises to enforce no rules or prohibitions, who claims that freedom comes through the rejection of all authority except that of self, with a capital S. And then God, who says that he is the ruler of the universe, who has laws that he claims we must obey, but that those laws are based simply on principles of genuine disinterested love, and which are the only way in which we can secure eternal happiness. You have to choose between those two systems. To attempt to take what you like from one and then mix and match with the other is really to confirm that you are choosing Satan's way of being your own God. There really is something about Satan's gospel that resonates in the human heart, even when we claim to believe in God's way. So don't trust in your own smarts to outwit the devil. Satan has a co-conspirator working inside you already. It's, it's you. You are compromised internally, which is why these deceptions are so appealing to us. God has to do a daily heart transplant in us so that we will even desire to submit to him. But since that itself requires submission, it's kind of a catch-22. The power to even desire to repent comes from seeing Jesus hanging on the cross. We have to see Jesus on the cross with the hammer in our own hands. And when we see what Jesus did for us, it allows us to see that his love is real, that God isn't just out for himself, and that we can trust him. Don't trust the voice promising your selfish heart that you can have your cake and eat it too. Trust the one who laid down his life for you. What does the simple gospel message I just shared have to do with the so-called UAPs or aliens? Everything. What you're seeing in the news is actually the ancient struggle for human hearts and minds, becoming obvious and visible, and really it's reaching its fulfillment. The deceptive signs will only increase in frequency and become more blatant and widespread until the very return of Jesus. Don't wait until then to decide who you will fully serve. Don't even wait one more day or one more hour. Look, he's near, even at the door. Won't you look at him on the cross and decide to trust him and hear his warning to you? Won't you please come into the ark of safety while the door is still open? 